Hello everyone, I'm Grandmaster Matthew Sadler and today we are going to have a look at the app Decode Chess. What is Decode Chess? Decode Chess is a tool that enables you to analyse a game, your own game or a game by Grandmasters, um, and it gives you advice and ideas and analysis about the game in natural language, in a language you can understand. In essence, the idea is that an AI can explain to you what's happening in the game and what it thinks itself. Um, now, you've got two ways of doing it. You've got uh, a very quick decode where you uh, just take a, a little look over the whole game and uh, it gives you a general feel for it. And then you've got the deep dive decodes where you um, click on an individual move and then it uh, looks at it very deeply and gives you a lot more information. Um, so let's have a look at the seventh game of uh, uh, the uh, Magnus Carlsen Jan Nipomniachi uh, World Championship match going on at the moment. Seventh game has just happened, it was uh, a draw, but there are a few interesting moments and it's interesting to look at, um, at them with Decode and to see what, um, yeah, you know, what extra information and uh, you get out of it. Now, just uh, showing you the, uh, the Decode interface here, we're starting at uh, White's eighth move. Um, as you can see, there's um, a very nice board. Um, the opportunity to uh, uh, flip the board, if you like. We I love that uh, animation. Um, there's one very in interesting thing is that um, from time to time, uh, Decode will display arrows, you know, just to um, uh, to reinforce some of the points that are being made. You can actually uh, make them more visible or less visible. Um, I like sort of. Uh, yeah, lower end somehow, you know, sort of, uh, I get a feel of, uh, of what, um, what, what I'm being told, but um, it's not too intrusive. Um, another little feature just on the, the left here is that you can uh, run uh, an engine on top of uh, the decoding that's being done. You can just run an engine and uh, get some analysis on there as well from Stockfish. So uh, that's a, a nice extra feature. On the top right, that's where the real uh, work goes in. You've got, um, uh, this is the uh, kind of the result of the quick decode, really, this blue line. This was uh, the general evaluation of the game. Um, I always like doing that quickly. I mean, it's not definitive analysis, but it's meant to give you an overview of, uh, of the course of the game. And basically, you can sort of see that, uh, you know, probably after about move uh, 18, 19, 20, there's not much point in looking at the game because it was just even. But there were a few sort of hilly bits here which are well worth uh, looking at. And the lines that, um, that you can see here, those are bits where I've gone for extra decoding, so extra analysis. And then afterwards here we've got all the information, that's all the good stuff. I'll be going through uh, all that you know, as the moves uh, take place. So the first point I wanted to look at was um, after A4. And just to, to get a feel for what uh, uh, decode chess can tell us. I mean, just for these examples, as you can see, I've already done the decoding. I've pressed this button and this button and decoded the uh, the game. So um, uh, normally you'd just be clicking on that, waiting for uh, uh, a few seconds and, uh, and then bang, you get your results. So here is quite interesting. We, um, we see that the favorite line for black is to play the move uh, 8b4. Uh, which is in fact the uh, the main move for uh, for black in this position, so not too surprising. I guess Magnus doesn't play it because it's uh, a bit too static for his tastes uh, against uh, against Jan. But uh, yeah, interesting to see. And then uh, a very interesting feature that's new, um, but that's uh, uh, hopefully will be incorporated uh, uh, very soon is. Um, um, explaining the move played in the position. So you've got the recommendation of um, of uh, the AI, and now you've got uh, uh, the move that was actually played. And then we're looking at um, yeah, you know what what is the uh, evaluation of that? And uh, just saying here, yeah, rook b8 um, is a good move. Threatens to play b4, uh, escapes the rook's threat. Rook takes a8, and uh, yeah, controls b4 as well. So yeah, you know, just some uh, some little interesting in information there. Um, what I always like to do uh, uh, here is to look at good moves, which is uh, um, the list of moves that, that, that could be recommended by Black. Just w sometimes you see some interesting stuff, like this move Knight A5, which is actually a uh, um, a pawn sacrifice. But you know, when you consider what Magnus has been doing in the match, you sort of think, well, actually, would <laughs> would he maybe consider doing something like that? Hadn't thought of Knight A5 at all until I uh, saw it here. Just that uh, that sort of thing, right? I mean, it's uh, something that's stimulating you to look uh, further. Threats is quite nice. Um, I always uh, like this one. It's um, 
the threat status before playing uh, the recommended move, which is b4, and then after playing the recommended move. And uh, that can sometimes be very revealing. Here it's quite simple. A takes b5 was the threat. You can see it with the arrow there. Um, after you've played b4, it's impossible. So this is a very simple example, but it can also, um, yeah, I mean, you can also have deeper examples as well. Um, piece rolls, funnily enough, is one that I'm pretty keen on. In a, a book I wrote a very long time ago for beginners, um, I recommended that, you know, a very nice way to, to get to grips with positions was to uh, look at what is every piece doing in the position, the connections, the interactions. And uh, this is actually exactly that. So, for example, pawn on a4 can capture the pawn on b5. Um, what's the knight on f3 doing? It can capture the pawn on e5. You know, you just build up a list of, um, of connections. Rook on e1 supports the pawn on e4. You know, and uh, um, I do think that obviously this is not so much for advanced players, but it's very, very good for, for starting players for beginners because it's the exercise that, um, that essentially happens in your brain, I think, automatically when you're an experienced player. But it's something that takes you a while when you're, um, uh, when you're just starting. So I like, this, I like this very much in actual fact. Um, all right, that was uh, A4. That was quite interesting. Let's move on to the next one, which was um, around move 15, after move 15, 15 C3. Um, and this was a very crucial moment. Uh, I'm, I'm focusing on this one because uh, I, I gave um, a live commentary together with um, uh, Natasha Regan, Nigel Short and uh, Stuart Conquest. And uh, we spent a lot of time on this position and uh, we were kind of wondering what the black best pla plan was because uh, we were a little bit worried about um, plans for white of knight h2 to g4 and also of rook e3 to f3. Yeah, that's the English school of chess culture, you know, sort of uh, um, <laughs> always trying to attack. And there are a couple of uh, a couple of interesting uh, things in that. Um, first of all, the recommend recommendation of uh, decode was um, bishop e6 takes queen e6. And the interesting thing about it was that uh, just the idea of it is simply to neutralize with rook a8. So that's just uh, just an interesting plan, just saying you want to play bishop e6 and you want to play that to enable rook a8. I mean, the, you know, the, the, the whole point of it is that, uh, um, you know, if the bishop uh, is still on c8, then you can't move the rook to a8. Um, the other interesting thing there is um, the move played in the position. Why is that a good move? And it might not be obvious what, um, what Magnus' uh, idea was, but uh, 97 is good because it intends to play c5. And then it just gives, you know, a little um, variation. You're, go you're going to play c5. And why is c5 a good move? It clamps down on d4. And also gives you the opportunity to play c4 to uh, uh, to trap the uh, or to uh, to block the diagonal of the bishop. So yeah, I mean that was pretty nice, uh, pretty nice too. Sometimes here, ah, you see, very there we are. We get some um, uh, some nice plans. You know, Black wants to play rook a8. However, rook a8 loses the rook, so you're playing bishop e6 before rook a8 in order to, be, to play rook a8 afterwards. You know, pretty nice, pretty nice and, uh, and easy and just gives you a, a very nice um, um, explanation, a simple explanation of um, yeah, what the computer thought, you know, rather than having to, um, uh, to do all the work yourself to, to decode it. So um, uh, the last one that was uh, kind of interesting, actually, was um, uh, Bishop E6 in this position. And um, yeah, D4 and inaccuracy. Centipawn lost 58, which is really interesting because, um, you know, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a very natural move and uh, I really absolutely agree with it. I think it was uh, a real mistake uh, just uh, opening up um, the position and, um, uh, yeah, I mean, all these black pieces are quite bunched together and then we're just uh, allowing them to have room. You know, it, uh, it just felt like it wasn't going to be the way to do it. But, yeah, I mean, here actually uh, Deco points out a, a very interesting idea, a very nice idea. Um, just Rook A6. Um, which you'll notice actually stops c5. This is what decode is saying. It threatens the pawn on d6. So it's actually stopping a, a black idea, c5. Um, but the main idea is gorgeous. It's absolutely lovely tactically. It's rook a8, queen a1, takes, takes. What? You're giving away a piece. What? You're not even taking it. Well, bishop takes b3. Um, actually allows queen takes b5, forking the rook on e8 and bishop on b3. So that's why uh, decode says the best line is bishop h3. Um, obviously if g takes, then uh, queen takes f3. You can see that arrow pointing towards the uh, the knight there. Um, and then queen takes b5, which should be a little bit of, a, of an advantage for, um, for white. Um, 
you know, you've got rid of a, a not very interesting uh, H-pawn. And, um, yeah, you've got some chances maybe, uh, you know, well, the Queen's very active, attacking the Rook. So you've got some dynamic advantage and also, um, uh, yeah, maybe some chances for, a, you know, a queenside, uh, uh, a queenside pawn push later. So there we are. That was um, a very quick look at uh, Game 7 of Carlson de Pomniacci. Of course, when de Pomniacci was white and uh, Magnus Carlson was black. Just with, uh, with decode chess. I hope you can see what the uh, possibilities are. Just uh, a way of getting your, your games analysed, but then having it explained in, um, in a way that, uh, that's easy to understand and that's very natural because it's uh, natural language. And all these little extra features here, they're not um, you know, valuable for every single move. But, um, but you do regularly see some stuff where you say, oh, you know, that's nice. That's really good. And uh, yeah, I said the good moves tab was, uh, was quite interesting for me too. So um, yeah, there we are. I hope you uh, enjoyed that and uh, do give uh, Decode a little go um, and, uh, you know, and see what you make of it. I think it's a, it's a very nice little addition, you know, to, uh, to, the, uh, to the scala of tools that we chess players are lucky enough to have nowadays. All right. Thanks very much for, wa for watching.